So dear learners, uh, in this particular video, we will discuss about the spiral view of requirement engineering uh, uh, process. So I think uh, in one of the previous video, we had already discussed about the requirement engineering process. So basically the requirement engineering process, it always deals with uh, uh, defining the requirements, which will start with the feasibility study, uh, later followed by the requirement elicitation and analysis then defining the different types of user requirements, system requirements, okay, then classification of the requirements, then validating the requirements, and finally you need to prepare one final requirement uh, document, uh, which, which normally very popularly called as SRS, okay. So this is what the actual uh, requirement engineering process that deals with. Uh, the same uh, concept that we are going to discuss here with respect to the spiral view, okay. So just have a look at here. Uh, so basically the requirement engineering process, uh, it will come up with some generic activities. Uh, the generic activities are the first one is requirements uh, elicitation, requirement analysis, requirement validation, and requirement uh, management. So elicitation in the sense what uh, you need to extract the requirements uh, by communicating with uh, different uh, stakeholders. Uh, then you have to analyze the requirements and you have to define those requirements uh, with proper classifications like user requirements, system requirements, then functional, non-functional requirements, domain requirements, so, so like that. So once the requirements classification is done, you can go for the validation of the requirements. So you need to check for the correction, completeness, realism, okay, consistency of the requirements, requirement dependency, everything that you need to look into that. Then finally, you have to manage the requirement. Why? Because so the, normally the requirements are always dynamic. Requirements will be continuously, they will be getting changed because of so many reasons. So how you are going to manage uh, that huge number of requirements uh, which are needed for the development of the uh, software is concerned, okay? So that we, the, this, these are all the different uh, activities that will be carried out uh, during the requirements uh, engineering uh, process, okay? Just have a look at here. This is the spiral model of uh, requirement uh, engineering uh, process. So the very first activity is uh, the requirement uh, elicitation. If you come across here, you can observe here. So requirement elicitation. So initially, um, our uh, process will start with uh, uh, the spiral model in, the, in, in, a, in a particular looping way here. So this is the beginning. Okay, so in the very beginning of the requirement engineering process, uh, as we have already discussed, uh, it will always start with a feasibility study. So feasibility study in the sense what, whether the software that we are going to develop um, in the coming days, whether it is feasible or not. Okay, so with respect to the business perspective, with respect to the, the market perspective, with respect to the profit uh, towards the company perspective, uh, the, every IT industry is going to look into this, look into this particular matter. Okay, so if it is, if it is positive, uh, then only they will go ahead, otherwise they will drop that plan also. Okay, so once the feasibility study is positive, then automatically your requirement elicitation will, uh, process will be start. So requirement elicitation means you have to identify uh, the different uh, stakeholders over here, okay, that is end users or uh, any person who are directly or indirectly related to the software to be get developed, okay. So you need to communicate with those stakeholders and uh, you should try to collect uh, the different types of uh, the requirements from them that is called user requirements. Then later these user requirements should be get converted into in detail technical perspective requirements called uh, uh, system requirements, okay. So once this will be done here, uh, then we will go for the requirement specification. So in the requirement specification, okay, so here uh, we, we, we are actually going to define the business requirement specification, then user requirement specifications, then what, the system requirement specification in a particular uh, style, because we have already discussed the different ways of defining the requirements using standard format, using mathematical representation, using system models or graphical representation, See there. So th there are different methods are there with which you are going to define the uh, requirements. That is called as what requirement uh, specifications. Okay. So once the requirements have been specified, now we will go for checking those requirements. Whether those requirements have been properly defined or not, whether they are correct or not, that we need to validate. Okay. So here we are going to perform the different types of checks on the requirements, okay? So that will be done. 
and while doing this requirement validation normally we are going to take the help of prototyping prototyping is nothing but it is uh, creating a model of the software which is to be get developed it, it is not a real time implementation it is only just a model that we can call it as a prototype which will always help us to better understanding of what the software and its functionalities and services which will help us to define the requirements uh, more uh, effectively and also it is followed by the review review of the uh, requirements okay so once uh, it is done then finally we are going to come up with the our final document that is system requirement document or we can call it as a uh, system requirement uh, specification srs so this is a very important document and which will be the base for our uh, next uh, activities like design and implementation and what uh, validations are concerned okay so this is what uh, the spiral view of uh, requirement engineering uh, uh, process okay so basically uh, this, uh, this this is very popularly called as uh, uh, the requirement elicitation and our requirement discovery that is going to be happen over here as just now I told that uh, so here uh, it is going to involve the technical staffs working with what the customers we will go and meet uh, the variety of uh, stakeholders and they will collect uh, the application domain requirements then the different sort of services and functionalities and system operational uh, constraints all these things will be get uh, uh, collected over here okay and uh, here in this particular process is concerned uh, end users managers engineers and many more different people domain experts all these people are going to be get uh, uh, involved as a stakeholders in this particular uh, uh, process okay so once again uh, within that uh, requirement engineering and process uh, as we know that requirement elicitation analysis is a one particular task under this requirement elicitation and analysis once again it will come up with four different uh, uh, stages okay one is the requirement discovery second one is requirement classification and organization third one is requirement prioritization and negotiation then fourth one is requirement uh, uh, specification okay so just have a look at uh, all these four different uh, stages which are part of this requirement elicitation and uh, uh, analysis so in the requirement discovery as uh, just now we told okay it is all about uh, discovering or uh, extracting the requirement um, by interacting with uh, the variety of what uh, the stakeholders so here we are going to define the requirements and also what uh, the domain requirements will be get uh, gathered over here okay and uh, the, in the requirement classification and organization here we are going to group the related requirements and we will organize them into a coherent uh, clusters okay so because uh, every requirements related to one particular part of the software that is to be get developed so we need to classify all the requirements over here so after classification we need to assign the prioritization and what negotiation so here uh, don't think that if you are going to define around 50 requirement all the 50 requirements are having the highest priority okay so some of the requirements are having very important uh, aspects for which we are going to give the highest priority and for some of the requirements which are uh, the normal activities or services as a part of software is concerned they will be having uh, the lesser priority so that priority that we need to assign always okay and based on this uh, highest priority uh, requirements and their importance even we can go forward the negotiation negotiation in the sense what especially during the contract period uh, see for example say whenever uh, today I, I want to give one uh, um, contract means uh, give an order for a new software to be get developed to some particular company then my negotiation always depends on uh, this set of requirements and their priorities okay if out of 50 requirements if all requirements are complex and having highest priority then automatically the cost of the software may be high okay so if i am going to, if i am able if i am ready to compromise for some of the requirements then i can negotiate with the company and the price may cut down okay so the, the, this is how uh, the system will be working over here with respect to budget is also concerned okay and also the requirement uh, specification so finally all our requirements will be get documented okay so that you can call it as a srs so this is what uh, the actual process of requirement elicitation and uh, analysis okay so within that requirement elicitation and analysis there are some problems that we are going to face here because uh, collecting and gathering the requirement is not so simple task it's a very tedious and complex job why because the very first problem here is stakeholders they don't know what they really want why because most of the end users are non-technical people 
they are not aware of the computer and IT related uh, facts. Okay, so normally whenever we will go and ask what exactly they want from the software, so they will be under confusion and they may not express their uh, actual um, uh, expectations in a proper way. Okay, and uh, another problem with the stakeholder, uh, they will express the requirements in their own terms, and it it, it normally happens there. Okay, if we, if you go to some uh, person who is working in a bank, so he may be using the same terminologies uh, which comes under that banking center, so which we cannot understand being a technical person. So that problem will be there always. <coughs> and the another problem with uh, the requ requirement elicitation is what? Uh, the different stakeholders may have conflicting requirements. So here, uh, the different stakeholder, what they will do, they will define the requirements. So they, they, their, their uh, um, way of talking may be same, uh, may, but the, the approach may be what? The different. Or they might be expecting the same service, but they might be telling in a different way. So the, the, that will, uh, what, what happens? It will, it will make a conflict of what? The requirements. Okay. Uh, then uh, the organizational and political factors may influence what? the system uh, requirements here. See, most of the time, uh, what happens, uh, many of our requirements are dependent on the organizational and managemental uh, decision, okay, and even the political uh, uh, factors over there, or uh, the actual process uh, which is going on in that particular uh, organization, okay, so that might be happening. See, for example, say, uh, imagine, uh, uh, for example, say, in, in, an, in, in an organization, okay, there may be some manager, Okay, and all the employees uh, are going to uh, take uh, make um, manual attendance every morning. They will go and meet the manager and say good morning and put the signature on that ledger. And tomorrow, if they make it automated with the attendance software with thumb, then auto then automatically the employees will start uh, pressing the thumb and simply they will go back and they will stop saying that good morning to the manager. So automatically the manager may feel bad. Okay, so you, you don't want that particular kind of what, the service in that software. So he may deny that. See, the, this is how the organizational political factors will always play an important role in changing and uh, deciding over the requirements, clear. And also the requirement change um, is also a very important factor because requirements are always dynamic and they will go on changing. Why? Because our business environment will change, our way of doing the work will change. Is it clear? Our technology may change because of which our requirement will also what? Uh, go on changing. So that these are all the problems uh, that we are going to face at the time of what? Requirement elicitation and uh, uh, analysis is uh, concerned. Okay. So this is all about uh, the requirement engineering process with a spiral model. Okay. So under that, uh, we have already discussed this uh, uh, requirement elicitation and uh, uh, analysis which will come up with uh, four different uh, uh, stages. Okay. Thank you.